Today we're at the Ceriza house and boy has it changed. Today we're talking rebar. And I'm Dave Edwards with Earthbound Homes. And I'm Brett with Earthbound Homes also. Now let's take it away. The last time we were at, visited this project, we were actually looking at an old house. And now we're looking at a giant pit in the ground and a whole lot of rebar. So Brett, uh, as is common in our area, we're sitting on a double layer of number, what looks like number six rebar. Uh, tell me a little bit about kind of what we're seeing here because we have this giant wall of rebar and we have the mats of rebar. Tell us what each kind of element is doing. So there's a lot of rebar on this and most of it's a mix of seven and eight. It's a lot of steel in this in this building and um, so when we just so to, for, for reference the number is the number over eight for inches so like a seven is seven eighths of an inch yes. of rebar a number six is three quarters of an inch of rebar yes. so that's a big piece of rebar yep okay the number eight's an inch of rebar and it's very very strong um, what we have here is a mat slab this mat slab is a one foot four in most of the common area of this house in some elements of the house it's two feet so there's a lot of structure in that area going up to all the way to the roof. A lot of uh, seismic things are involved with that and a lot of weight and gravity things are involved with that. Okay, so the double, why do we have a double layer of rebar here? Because in normal slabs, like we see kind of slabs, what are called slabs on grade. So at the surface of the ground, they're essentially like maybe a number three or a number four and you know, four inches or five inches thick. We have 16 inches of concrete here and we have two layers of rebar why you have two layers of rebar because if you only had the one layer in the middle it would crack a lot more when they figured out that you could use steel and cement and get a lot more strength out of it they figured out that you can't just put one layer on the outside and the rest cement you've got to continue through that thing giving it structure so that's what you've got here is a slab that's one foot four thick with two layers of steel in it and and we know that, that concrete has high compressive strength, so the, but it doesn't have what's called uh, expansion, extension strength or Extension. tensile strength. And so the rebar is there to give us tensile strength in this foundation. So in an earthquake, it is not moving up and down. Right, so this mat slab just stays on its own. It doesn't move up and down or wrinkle. It stays perfectly straight. Okay, and that's Perfect. all determined by the structural engineer. Yes. Okay. And then I see these behind us. We also have a double layer of rebar for the walls. And that's also determined by the structural engineer. It's also just, you could probably get away with a single row in the middle, but it would be like two inch bar. Bar would be huge and take up quite a void. Okay. So to split it apart and make it even more strong, they add another layer on each side. Those are inside the concrete two inches so that they don't get rusted or, or corroded. Okay. And then behind you, I see kind of an anomaly, uh, and, and that is a special uh, assembly of rebar. Why do we have that there? And I see there's two of them. Uh, they look, you know, they're certainly thicker than the other wall portion. Why are they here? So these are, these are called uh, pilasters. You use them below a moment frame in the concrete. And a moment frame is a giant steel structure that's there to replace uh, shear walls essentially. Yes, it'll okay. take the moment of an earthquake and it'll make it so that it is not so much for the house but takes most of that with torque and got it. You can see the bottom's just basically a Massive spaghetti metal. Sp spaghetti metal. Okay. Um, and that'll go up to the top here where you'll have embedments that will be uh, placed for the columns that go above that. Some of them go up two stories. This one goes up one story and it'll have cross members in it that'll uh, take the torque. So that's in a spot in the foundation where we're putting so much load on the foundation from earthquakes that this assembly is not strong enough. So we have to make it extra strong. Right. And that's also defined by structural engineer. That's also defined by structural engineer, yes. Okay. And then I noticed over here, every place that we have a place where the foundation has a void in it, whether it's a depression or a box for plumbing, we have cross members uh, is that to reduce cracking at those areas? Yeah, it's also to strengthen them because now you're putting a hole through the, the structure that you're building and you need to structure around it with some steel. Okay, and so all of this had to be essentially assembled in place, bent in place to make sure that in an earthquake, because really the, the house sitting here is not the real load 
on this foundation. It's really when an earthquake comes and shakes the house right. and all the structure up above puts all of its energy into the foundation. Right. Okay. If you're interested in learning more about the Ceriza project or foundations and rebar, please hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way. We're gonna talk about rebar. Now, I'm Dave Edwards with Earthbound Homes. I'm Brett with Earthbound Homes. <laughs> I didn't know you were gonna do that. <laughs>